If you're in the tech sector, then having a good lab environment is critical to help you develop your skills. Being able to create and manage a multi-server lab environment gives you the ability to learn practically any technology out there. In my home lab, I run LXC, and I'm able to create new virtual machines in seconds. In case you're wondering, LXC stands for Linux Containers, but it's different than something like Docker. Whereas Docker's meant to run a single task in a container, LXC functions more like a virtual machine. All you need to get started is a single host running Linux. My recommendation is to go with Ubuntu if you can, but it is supported on many Linux kernels. I have my LXC environment running on a Raspberry Pi. This gives me an always-on lab environment, but feel free to install it on your desktop or laptop machine. To get started, just run the LXC install command applicable to your operating system. Once the installation is complete, you're going to run the init command. This is going to take you through a guided installation. For the most part, you can just accept the defaults. For my installation, I just accepted the defaults for every option available. After you've run the initialization, you're ready to get started. Let's hop into the terminal, and I'll show you all the commands you need to know to manage your virtual machines. Okay, so with LXC, if you want to see the machines that you're currently running, just run a LXC list. And this is going to return information on your current machines that you're running. So you can see that I have five machines here. You can see node one, two, three, four, and then this one that just has a randomly generated name. Now by default, the LXC list gives some pretty good information. You can see the name, the state, and the IP addresses, but I usually use my own version of the LXC list command that gives a little bit better information. So that command is this one right here. You can see LXC lists, and then I'm specifying my own columns. So I'm doing the name and the state, the IPv4 address, and then the image description. So I find this way is a little bit cleaner, and you can alias this to something else if you want. But yeah, basically I find it's pretty important to know the image name of your actual containers and virtual machines. Now to create your own machine is very easy. All you need to do that is do an LXC launch and then specify the image repository and then the version. So I'm going to use the image repository of Ubuntu and then I'm going to say 18.04. And then after that, I'm going to specify a container name. So I'll go Ubuntu 1. And now it's creating my virtual machine, Ubuntu 1. And now it's up and running, so now if I do an LXC list command, you can see that it's up and it's on this Ubuntu 18.04 image. Now if you want to search what images are out there, the best command for that is LXC image alias and then specify the image repository. The two big ones are Ubuntu. So you can specify it like this, and then it's gonna search for everything in the Ubuntu repository. And I actually need to say list here. So let's fix that. And it should come back pretty quickly here and return you all the results. So you can see all the Ubuntu images. Now, if you were just looking for one of them in particular, you just take the same command and then add at the end here what you're looking for. So I could go 18.04. And you can see that this returned all the images with the alias 18.04 in it. Now, the other repository is not Ubuntu. It's actually just images. And for this one, you can basically put any Linux container image. So I'll just search for Alpine. And it'll just take a minute as it searches, but it should return all the Alpine images. And you can see, yeah, there's a bunch of Alpine images. Now, if I want to launch one, basically just take my command that I did before, the LXC launch, and then I'm gonna say images. And let's grab this one right here. And I'll rename it Alpine one. And now it's creating the Alpine virtual machine. And if I run my list command again, you can see that it was created as well. So a very simple way to get virtual machines up and running very quickly. Now I'm gonna go over a few more commands that I find helpful when using LXC. So I like the LXC info command. 
and then you specify the container name. And basically you can see it gives you a dump of information, it gives you the name, the architecture, when it was created, and then IP address and network information. So pretty good stuff. Now if you actually want to run a command on one of these containers, what you can do is do the LXC exec and then specify the container name. So I'll just go hostname and you can see it returned its hostname. Now, if you actually want to go into one of these containers, you can go LXC exec, specify the container name again, and then just specify a shell environment. So I'll say bash, and now I'm in Ubuntu one. Now, if I want to do this for my Alpine image, Alpine doesn't actually have bash installed, so you can see that doesn't work. So you just actually go sh, and that'll bring you in there. So that's a good way to hop in and out of your containers. Now, if you want to stop one of your containers, you can go lxc stop, and then specify the container name. And if I go lxc list, you can see Alpine one is stopped, and you can delete it very easily as well. and it's gone. Now let's say I created one of these machines and I set up a bunch of settings and now I basically want to clone it. You can do this very easily with the LXC copy command. So to do that, just go LXC copy and then just specify the machine name and then the destination name. So I'll go Ubuntu one, copy it to Ubuntu two. And now when I do an LXC list, you can see that I got both containers running. It looks like the new one doesn't start by default, so let's start it up. And now it's up. Now one thing you can do with these containers is push and pull files from them. So one thing I commonly do when I set up a machine is I push over my SSH authorized keys and this allows me to SSH into the machines. So my SSH keys are located under .ssh and then let's grab this so and then list this out. So I want to copy over this file to my Ubuntu machine. So to do that I go lxc file push and let's say this one and then authorize keys and then the destination should be root slash dot ssh and then we should specify the file name as well so this should push it over and we can see it failed and the reason behind that is you actually need to specify the container name so it knows where to push the files to so you go ubuntu one so the container name of ubuntu one and then the file location so let's do that and now we should be able to ssh to it so i'll go ssh root at and then since there's no name resolution right now we'll just throw in the IP address and connect and you can accept this and it should be able to connect yep we can see that if we tried to do this to Ubuntu 2 oh it doesn't have an IP address yet but if we did if we tried it to Ubuntu 2 it would fail because it doesn't have that authorized key file to it so you can see we try it says permission denied so let's push it over to Ubuntu 2 and now when we connect it should work I'm hoping yep so it connected fine so that's a really easy way to push over your authorized keys file so you can SSH into them now if I wanted to pull a file it's basically the same command except for I would reverse these so I'd go Ubuntu one and then you would do a pull so this would be a way to pull a file from it now if you didn't want to push or pull files but you wanted to edit it you could do that as well so let's take this out 
and we'll say LXC file edit, and then we'll go Ubuntu one. And you can see that I'm connected to it. Now, another great feature with LXC is what we call snapshots. And basically this allows you to make a restore point on your machines and then revert to that snapshot if you ever need to. So if we go LXC list, you can see none of my containers have a snapshot. But if I want to take a snapshot, I can go LXC snapshot and we'll go Ubuntu one. And then we'll just hit enter and it'll take the snapshot. Now, if I do LXC list, you can see Ubuntu one has a snapshot. And if I want to learn more about that snapshot, I could go LXC info and then the container name. And there you can see that it has that one snapshot. Now, if you wanted to restore to that snapshot, all you need to do is uh, LXC restore and then container name. So this is going to return me to the restore point of that snapshot. So obviously you would probably do this before you make any major changes to your container or virtual machine. Uh, you take the snapshot, go in there, make your changes. And if something went wrong, you could always just go back to that snapshot. So the container has been restored. And if we go LXC list, you can see that it is running. It still has that snapshot. So you can always revert to that snapshot whenever you want. Now snapshots do take up some memory. So you don't really want to leave a bunch of snapshots hanging there on containers or virtual machines, especially if you're going to be keeping them for a while. So if you want to delete them, you just run the LXC delete and then uh, make sure to put the container name and then slash the snapshot. So that's how you delete the snapshot and you can see it's gone there. Now, one thing that I like to do for this is make everything accessible on the LAN. You can see nodes one to four are on this 10.1.1 subnet. And then these other ones are on 10.211. So that's basically just like a default subnet that LXC creates and connects the containers to by default. But if you want to get your containers on your LAN, what you can do is map them to a bridged adapter. So to do that, let's clear our screen. What you need to do is create a bridged adapter. Now this might be done differently depending on the operating system that you're running LXC from. I'm on uh, Ubuntu 20, I think. Yeah, I'm on Ubuntu 20.10. And the way I do this is through a net plan file. So I'm going to pull up that file right now. It's at this location right here. And these are my settings. And I have this in the description below for anyone interested. But as you can see, I have an Ethernet adapter. It's just using DHCP. And then this was what I actually had to add. So I have F0 and then BR0. So basically what I need to do is map my containers to this bridged adapter and this is going to bring them onto my LAN so they can pull DHCP addresses from my router. So this is a pretty big command so I'm just going to copy and paste it in and go over it. So you can see it's lxc config device add the container name f0. This is the container nickname so f0 is what you're going to use as well nick the nick type should be bridged and then parent is going to be your bridged adapter so i called mine br0 so i'm going to map it to that one put that in and you can see that ethernet adapter has been added to ubuntu one if you do lxc list you can see there's no more ip address you actually need to stop and start the container for this to work so we'll go lxc stop Ubuntu one, and then we're going to start it up again. And now if I do a LXC list, you can see that it's in this 10.1.1 subnet range, which is on my LAN. 
So this is a routable subnet on my network. So I'm able to access it from any device in my house. So very convenient if you're running a home lab. I highly recommend connecting your containers to a bridged adapter. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I'll try to get back to them. And if you're interested in learning more about Linux and creating your home lab so you can further your career in DevOps and IT, then go ahead and check out the other videos on my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.